Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, this course. So um, our, in our first lecture, I will give you some overview of the policy and then we start with uh, um, chapter two and uh, section one. Okay, so first, uh, this is math CS statistics. Uh, four seven five. Uh, introduction to uh, combinatorics. Okay, so my name is Han Long Fang. And first of all. Um, uh, I suggest you to strongly suggest you to look at the syllabus on canvas and the uh, files uh, and if you have any question about this course uh, feel free to send an email to uh, my address at hfang35 at whisk edu it's also on the syllabus and uh, the textbook we are going to use is uh, written by Richard Browdy and the name is introductory combinatorics fifth edition uh, this is kind of an old textbook because the first edition was written in 1977 and uh, the fifth edition the most recent one is written at uh, uh, 2010 uh, but it covers so many many basic informations and I think it suffices for our course. Um, but you know, today everything is changing so fast, just like the AlphaGo appears probably just within the three or four years, but then the Go game uh, changes a lot. Go players develop different uh, strategy according to the AlphaGo techniques. So I strongly suggest you to look at some other materials uh, for your own interest. Okay, and uh, the situation is a little bit different in pure mass and in comb combinatorics, I guess. Uh, in pure mass, most of the time we read old books because, for example, I even I always uh, read papers probably one, 100 years ago and I find people almost forgetting some forgot some very very interesting topics all people know but probably the situation is different in combinatorics and CS we always want the most new one most interesting one so I just want you to keep a mind on this don't focus totally on this textbook, please read some interesting material outside it as well. And uh, uh, our aim for this course is to cover chapters two to seven, and then chapters 11 to uh, 13. So for the first part of the course, chapters two to seven, the main topic is how to counting, how to calculate some numbers, how to enumerate. We always want some close formula or some explicit number. So that's a basic for combinatorics. After all, we want some number, we want some formula. But nowadays, it also changes a lot. Therefore, we also focus, uh, focus some, 
focus on the second part. It's called graph theory. Because nowadays we can use computers to test, to calculate, and to guess. Even we can just uh, use computer to come up with some formula. Okay, so it's not so necessary to for you to develop your own uh, result, but still some advantage in uh, the mathematical part of the counting because uh, for computers, you can only test finite numbers. For example, you can test uh, 1,000 times, 2,000 times, or even more. But after all, you cannot do do more than the atoms in the university. Sorry, the universe. Okay, so probably 10 to, let me guess a number, for example, 10 to 1,000. That's the most you can do, for example. But in mathematics, n can, of course, be larger than any number, any finite number. So that's the advantage of the mathematical reasoning. As soon as, as soon as it's a number, the proof works. Okay, so I stu for the first part, I want you to get some uh, mathematical training on the proof. For the second part, uh, I choose, usually people choose different topics, like they develop some theory on Cartesian numbers or special numbers, Sterling numbers, but uh, it's only my opinion that this is not so important today. You can use computer. But another very important topic I want to cover is the graph theory. So why graph? So mathemat mathematics, we always want something abstract, just like at the very at the ancient time, people suddenly realized that one sheep is the same thing as one stone, two sheep is the same thing as two stones. So that's a huge development because we can use one, two, three, those natural numbers, integer numbers to represent the objects. And then later people noted that next to one, next to two, just like own you one dollars, own you two dollars, then people develop the negative numbers. So that's a abstraction. From that, we simplify the objects a lot. Okay, so graph is kind of some abstraction of the relations, no matter what relation you have. For example, you want to some postman want to uh, deliver something so he or she can just uh, uh, write down the place places as some vertex and then connect the vertex by some lines. So in graph theory, we call those as edges. Okay, so that's an abstraction of the uh, real problem. But uh, this is only one, uh, one point of view. The other point of view is it's not too abstract. In mathematics, there's some... Uh, it's a fashion that abstracts things to the most high level, just like we talk about algebra. I can name some few. Sheaf, it's not necessary to know this for you. Shift and uh, so cohomology and uh, duality. Oh, duality is not there. And uh, ring, blah, blah, blah. There are a lot of uh, fancy language and it's very abstract. Uh, but most of the time, when you do real problem, you don't want to get into those uh, abstract, too abstract stuff. So I want to say the graph is not that abstract. 
as a shift or whatever, is still a geometric. geometric objects. So we are humans, we like geometry. The most uh, uh, direct interaction between us and uh, nature is by viewing the pictures. Just like if you see a triangle or you see a, a square, rectangle, a sphere, a circle, you have direct uh, idea what the shape it is. But if you written, written in language, it's just like, okay, you have some shape uh, with uh, one side, blah, blah, the other side, blah, blah. You need time to uh, reflect what it is. Okay, so the graph is also kind of such thing that if you give you a picture, no matter what it is, probably you have some direct idea what the picture is. Also, another key feature is it's uh one D sorry. It's two D basically means it's on the you can write down on the paper okay and the third thing is it's good for computer program okay we will see those uh, good things uh, later when we uh, begin the study uh, uh, chapters uh, 11 to 13. So that's the reason why we choose uh, counting and graphs as our two main topics in this course. Okay, and then we turn back to the uh, to the policy. So uh, homework it's very important in our course. Later on, you will see um, how much weight it takes for your grades. So I will post a homework on Canvas as assignment. Actually, you can see the assignments probably uh, starting, from, starting from this week. And you will see nine assignments, but they have different uh, deadline, one, one week, week by week. And uh, another thing is, uh, please read Canvas announcement. Announcements uh, frequently, because uh, if the university has some change or whatever, uh, we have some uh, homework extension, uh, the answer to some common problems I will post on mm, the camera's announcement. Okay, also we will use uh, Piazza as our discussion forum. That means uh, you can post, um, post your questions online on Piazza, either uh, with your name or without. Um, so your, your, your classmates will help you and I also will write down my opinion on the problem. So it's a free discussion forum. It's very helpful. And I think I have already invited you if you register the course uh, uh, before, the, before this week. But if you, you're not in the Piazza, please write email to me. I can invite you. Uh, by hand. Okay, also uh, the first week uh, we don't have homework, so uh, no. 
uh, I mean, you ha you don't have the hand in homework. So your homework is read chapter one and get a rough idea what people care about at, at author's time. Okay, nowadays probably we, we don't care about too much on the problems uh, he mentioned. We care more about uh, just like AI, machine learning, and uh, AlphaGo stuff. Okay, also uh, office hour. Uh, since I had two sections, um, and uh, people, students, uh, in different time zones, so I would like to arrange the office hour uh, by appointment. If you have any confusion about the course or the uh, general questions about your study or whatever, you can send an email to me and we can arrange a proper time, both for you and me, to have a discussion. Okay, next uh, we will talk about the grades. So probably that's the most interesting part for you. So first, um, the homework is uh, 60%. The final is 20%. And uh, for all my advanced uh, uh, course, I usually have a reading project or reading report part with different weights in different courses. So in this course, reading report takes uh, 20%. So I will tell you uh, what is what is homework final reading report requirement and what's my expectation. So for homework, uh, probably we will have nine on 10, depend on uh, how the course going in the following weeks. But let's see, we have nine homeworks. So the material uh, covers chapter two to seven. So I, uh, I suppose will no homework will be no homework in April. Uh, this is because when we appro approach April, I think you basically are able to solve the problems uh, by your own. So I, I, I will not force you to do any exercise, but I want to save the time uh, the whole month, April, for you to do some serious reading report, write, write up a reading report by your own interest. So the homeworks um, mainly is for uh, January, February, March, and probably first week of the April. Okay, and uh, since it takes 6%, so there's no job and no later homework. And it, for example, if you, okay, so therefore I suggest you to to do it in advance in case you have some emergency pops up. Okay. Okay, so for the final exam, for the final exam, it will be take home exam. You have one week to uh, to finish it. And I will specify what is the requirement. For example, uh, are you able to cooperate cooperate with your classmates or not, or use the internet or not? I will specify it basically. But basically, 
you are not allowed to cooperate with other people, but you are allowed to to use all the material, all the uh, sources you can approach. Okay, then for the reading report, so basically is pick a topic you are interested in. So either from the textbooks or some journal, either in textbook or not not this textbook, just any books. Or articles. It could be journal article or conference article. Read and uh, write a reading report. So uh, the requirement will be, it, it should be in LaTeX form. If you don't know what is LaTeX, please search online. Basically, it's a format uh, usually for mathematical papers. And uh, at least five pages. And uh, you should see it in your own words, just like an article. If I can search the majority of your paper online, find some similarities between this and some other uh, sources, probably you will have trouble. Your own words, just like a paper. And uh, uh, the next thing is choose a topic you are really interested in. This is very important because uh, after all, I don't want to give you some burden. I just want to give you some training on find some interesting paper and really work on it and try to understand it and state it in some uh, serious way. Uh, even you, you are not doing some master or PhD programs, but later on in your work, probably you need to give a report to your boss, what's going on in this area, what's going on for the other companies. So it's a good training to really understand it and uh, digest it, state it in your own words. Okay, and I will uh, also, if the topic you are choosing is not interesting to you, then you will have a burden. It's uh, endurable. But therefore, I suggest you to find some interesting thing. Then you can uh, be more persistent. Okay. And I, I, will, I will upload some good models some samples on canvas files so those are from my previous course uh, 623 complex analysis but I think it's no matter what course you choose it's a still undergraduate student course no matter what course you choose the material are different, but the format um, will be similar. If you still have problem on how to write 
a reading report, you you can email me and we can have some uh, online discussion. Okay, so that's a, a reading report. Oh, uh, also. You need to, as I stated clearly in, uh, in syllabus, you need to decide the topic with me uh, by the end of, uh, of March. And uh, uh, the day to hand in probably is the same day as uh, uh, final exam, the deadline for the final exam. Okay, so that's a, a basic policy. But there's uh, still another uh, attention. So if for the people who want more challenge, so an alternative way to uh, get A So that that is solve solve the following problem. So uh, I will state the problem. Assume that P is a uh, integer P greater than two or equal to is an integer x one equals x p plus one equals zero. Define a polytope delta by Polytope is a subset uh, in the Euclidean space defined by some hyperplanes, so more explicitly. Less than xi less than or equal to 1 plus i minus 1 times p plus 1 minus i. This is for 0 less than i less than p. And then you have this for j from 2 to p. So basically, this is, for example, uh, this is a poly polytope with uh, 2p minus 1 edges. Just like on one side, you have this, and then On the other side, probably you cut out by two plane, two three planes. Yeah, my bad join. But if you run the program, some mathematic or whatever, uh, or the uh, maple, you can view the pictures. Okay, so this is a region, and then uh, the function density function. function rho x2 xp by this is a product for all ij from 1 to p xi plus 1 minus xi minus xj plus 1 minus xj square and uh, so the conjecture is uh, for 2 less than k less than p the integral of xk times rho on the uh, polytope divided by the integral of rho on the polytope is greater than 
i minus 1 times p plus 1 minus i. Okay, and uh, so uh, this is a conjecture, but not your job. Your challenger is is a uh, compute the explicit number. Integration along uh, uh, the polytope of x k times rho for two less than k less than p, and uh, integration of uh, rho on the polytope. Okay, so for row less uh, greater than six, less than twenty, sorry, for P greater than six, less than twenty, compare this uh, these quantities. Okay, so now let me tell you what, why this problem. So actually this is a conjecture. The conjecture is was raised uh, in my uh, recent paper. Uh, on archive, and uh, so I don't know how to prove it. So the the geometric uh, uh, consequence of this conjecture is very interesting. That there are Kalian symmetrics on some geometric uh, manifolds, but then you just narrow down to uh, this specific uh, formula, and I also compute. I computed, we computed the case uh, p equals 4 and p equals 5 by Mathematica. Explicitly, it shows the conjecture is true, but then for the higher numbers, uh, I, I cannot trust the numerical test. For the numerical test, we can do up to for, pro, probably uh, p equals 15. But uh, we don't have the explicit number. OK, so if you can do this challenge problem, I think you're good enough to, to get A. Also, moreover, If you can solve the conjecture, I'm sincerely uh, inviting you to write a joint paper. So that those, uh, so this is for people who want to uh, challenge themselves. So, but I think if you you just want to uh, do your best to get A or to uh, get whatever you expect, you just need to complete the first pass. Just do homework. Do final exam to a uh, reading project. Okay, so uh, next I will, before we start uh, our material, uh, let's, uh, 
I want to share with you some learning strategy for this course. So first is uh, read the textbook. Uh, because this is a course, basically we focus on the textbook uh, with some uh, different examples, but it's a good idea to get uh, uh, well-stained uh, ideas, philosophies, and other examples in the textbook. So uh, textbook is still the first helpful resource for you. And uh, the other thing is the most important, do exercise. Uh, no people learn combinatorics without exercise. And the, I don't know if you know that, there are always undergrad students uh, saw uh, long exist uh, uh, open problems in combinatorics. So they always want to challenge themselves and uh, the problems, uh, especially in combinatorics, never more kind to the older person than the young person. Probably sometimes just uh, the inverse, the reverse, they prefer the young person. Okay, so do exercise, probably you can solve one, one conjecture. Okay, and also uh, please explore the internet. Nowadays people share codes, uh, uh, I think GitHub and also discuss mathematical problems on mass overflow or stack change. So it's a good habit to ask people to share your knowledge with people, help other people and get help from other people. The main idea for the internet is open. We open to other people and other people open to us. We are, we are family, just in the knowledge sense. It's a little bit different from the old idea for some techniques or for mathematics. Okay, also oh, I want to add one thing. So for the reading project, if you are in statistics, probably you will be interested in some uh, real problem, just like uh, sociology or whatever. There are some very good books on the uh, connection between combinatorics and uh, sociology or whatever. You just uh, type in search on Google, you can find the uh, uh, topics you are interested in. And you can also use the topics in your uh, other courses. For example, the other course uh, give you assignment to do some project. If you think it's suitable, you can use it and uh, try to write up a reading report. Okay. Uh, if you still have questions on these topics, uh, feel free to ask me. Probably that's a common problem for other students. Then I will answer it uh, on cameras. Okay, next, uh, let's start with our course. So we start with chapter two. And the first section is for basic counting principles. So first thing, uh, we will introduce the so-called uh, addition of principle. And before that, I don't know if you know the uh, notation or set, um, but I don't want to spend time on explaining what is a set. It, it's not a mathematical reasoning cause for the borderline, so I will just be rushed. Let S be a set, a partition of S. Good. 
partition of S uh, is a collection S1, S2 up to Sm of subsets of S such that each element of S is in exactly one of those subsets. Uh, we would like to write as S is a union, S1 union, S2 union up to Sm, and Si intersect intersect Sj is empty if I is different from J. And then S1 to Sm are called the parts of the partition. And uh, let's do some remark. So sometimes uh, you can use the following uh, notation, just S is a disjoint union or SI, disjoint. But if you want to specify, you still uh, You can still use uh, a previous notation. This is uh, very rigorous. S is covered by SI and the different subsets has no common intersection. So an uh, easy example is it's like the following. So suppose this is uh, geometric objects and then you cut it into uh, several pieces. Each one is S1, S2, Sm. Okay, the whole thing is S, and the different subsets has no intersection. Uh, another one is probably probably you have some uh, map and uh, cut it into several pieces. Um, my bad joint. So first one, this is Minnesota, this is Wisconsin, this is Illinois. And uh, there are some other parts and then you have the Middle West. Okay, now uh, uh, let's define a, a very important quantity associated to a set. So usually how people understand some objects, probably the object has different structure. I don't know if you learn object algebra or linear algebra. For linear space, you have dimension and uh, but uh, except the dimension, the linear space may have some inner product or whatever, they have complicated structure. But how people understand those things, usually we associate numerical data to those things. For example, we measure a person roughly just by how tall it is. What is the weight? What is the age? Which university? And what, uh, what year? And what, what is the uh, what is, is his or her major? By different questions, yes or no, or uh, the numerical data. So that's a kind of uh, idea how people understand the things. So for a set, Usually we associate with the number called the cardinality or the size or the order to it. 
the number of objects of a set S is denoted by uh, it, it looks like the norm. So later I will use uh, I will say uh, the norm of S um, with a slight abuse of notation. But you should understand this is a cardinality of a set. Or the size or the order of S. And now let's look at some example. So now let S be a set consider the following objects UW, UW medicine. Unknown statistic CS mass for thirty five and let A be a subset of S consists of UW UW medicine B to be unknown. To be three majors mass CS statistics. D is for uh, 75. And then we call ABC is a partition of S. Uh, rigorously, you can write A is union A. O B and C and A intersect B equals A intersect C equals B intersect C is empty. Or you can write S is disjoint union A B C. Okay then let's counting let's count the elements in each uh set. In each set, for S, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You have se 7 objects, so the cardinality of the norm of S is 7. Similarly, the cardinality of A is 2, B is 1, C is 3, D is 1. Then the observation is the norm of S is the norm of the summation of the norm norms of a b c d and if you you are brave enough in mathematics or in any science courage is uh, most important i think even in literature courage is the most important personality to success to succeed so here if you breathe enough you can guess probably this is true for any s and any partition suppose a set s is partitioned into subsets s1 s2 S K then S is S one plus S two plus up to the norm of S K. Okay, so this is the addition principle. Uh, when we apply this, just like we first. Uh, Divide the problem into several uh, subclasses. For example, counting how many people, uh, how many students living in the dorms. Probably you can counting the people living in org, counting the people living in the uh, waters, 
uh, these waters contain people living uh, the then job and whatever and then add them up together okay so that's a idea uh, next we introduce uh, the second principle before that as well we try to introduce some notation for uh, to simplify our statement so let a b be sets in their Cartesian product denoted by A cross B is a set of all ordered pairs A B with A in A and B in B. Cartesian pro actually we use this a lot already. So first example coordinates for point in the plane. So you have two coordinates x and y. So x is in is a real number, y is a real number. And x, y is in the Cartesian product. That's why we denote as R2. And the example two, this is a continuous example. Let's look at some discrete version. So suppose A is a mass, C takes uh, CS, B is 340. 475 and then A cross B will be a set consists of mass 345 CS three, oh, sorry 340 statistics 340 mass for 75 CS for 75 statistic Four seventy five, and then the observation, the cardinality of the Cartesian product A cross B, is six, which is three times two, which is uh, uh, norm of A, the cardinality of A, times the cardinality of B. Then we have the following multiplication principle. The cardinality of the Cartesian product is a product of each component, the cardinality of each component. Okay, now let's look at some uh, familiar example. So let D10 be a set consists of uh, 10 integers, 0, 1, 2, up to 9. So actually those are 10 digits. And what is the Cartesian product of itself, it will be I1, I2. I1 is from 0 to 9. I2 is from 0 to 9. And uh, it's easy to see. You can use another notation, just like 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 9, 1, 10. 9899. Nine, nine. So actually, this is a set of 
it's the same thing as not the exact same, just uh, bijection. All the natural numbers less than or equal to ninety nine. Okay, and similarly for a uh, triple Cartesian product itself, you have the similar thing. So this is a rigorous definition, and then this is the same as all the nature numbers less than or equal to. Uh, nine hundred ninety nine, and then how many integers between zero and uh, nine nine m digits? Sorry, M nines. So the answer is ten to M's power. Why this is true? You can use the uh, it co uh, it coincides with the uh, multiplication principle. This is ten cross ten, ten times ten, times ten, M tens. Okay, and uh, in computer science, we would like two digits instead of ten digits. So we will have the same result. Actually, the uh, two digit, more than two digit, all, all binary uh, uh, representation first introduced by Nebnitz. Inspired by some Chinese Yi Ching. The title is Explicitization de Arithmetic Binary, blah blah. And uh, by Fu Yi, Fu Xi, I think. Uh, actually, Leibniz has a. Uh, some paper on the Chinese old uh, philosophy. It's it's very interesting. <laughs> okay, and the digits D two, just like D two, consider two elements zero and one. So D two cross D two will be zero 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 one one zero one one. So what's the cardinality of this guy and D twos? M cross M Cartesian product or D two, so the cardinality will be two to M's power. Okay, then uh, this is uh, a mathematical version of transforming uh, the multiplication principle into the cardinality or, or Cartesian product. Uh, but in reality, we have different, a slightly different version of multiplication principle. Uh, so probably let's call it generalized multiplication principle. To consider a uh, mount uh, stage experiment with k stages, assume that stage one has 
and one outcomes. Stage two has n two outcomes. Regardless of the previous, the result of stage one. This is very important. Otherwise, we will later on we will develop different method to compute this. The important thing is the outcome of stage two is independent of stage one. And blah blah same thing and the stage k has n k outcomes regardless of result of previous stages. Okay, then the total number. Of outcomes is n one times n two times all the way up to n k. So let's do one e example. So determine the number of positive. Integers that are factors of the number three to four times five square times eleven to seven times thirteen to eight. So solution. So each factor can be write down as. Three to i's power times five to j's power times eleven to k's power times thirteen to l's power, and where i is between zero and four, j is between zero and two, k is between zero and seven, l is between zero and eight. And、uh, for first one, you have. For I, you have five choices. For J, you have three choices. For K, you have eight choices. For L, you have nine choices. So totally, you have five times three times eight times nine. Ah, one thousand and eighty numbers. Ah,、uh, of course, here. Actually, you need to verify by yourself. Verify、uh, by yourself. Uh, if x equals three i times five j times eleven k times thirteen l, y is three. I theta times five j theta times eleven k theta times thirteen l theta. Then x is different from y, if and only if i different from i theta or j different from j theta or k different from k theta or L different from L theta. That means, uh, no matter where you choose before, as soon as you, one of the、uh, factor has different. I mean, uh, three one of the prime has different power. Powers then the number is different. Yeah. So, uh, I will say. Digest this. 
so mathematically, what you are doing actually is uh, construct remark. Let me do a remark. What you are doing is construct constructed uh, bijection between factors of the number and uh, the set uh, sorry and the set i j k l the order the set where i is between 0 5 j is between 0 2 k is between 0 and uh, uh, 7 L is between 0 and 8. Bijection. So to prove it's a bijection, you need to first uh, construct a map. A map. So let me denote this as S, this is T. Uh, F from ST. So each element of S associated with to it uh, uh, an element of t and then prove f is injective that means if s1 uh, s2 in s f s1 equals f s2 then s1 equals s2 and then uh, so then you prove f is subjective that is for all sorry so let me see if t is an element of t then there is an element S O S in capital S such that F S is T. Yeah, if you want to rigorously uh, show it, you need to show these three steps. Uh, but when you do exercise, you are not necessary to show mathematical rigorousness. But I just want to remind you that when you have some confusion about if you are doing right or wrong on some specific problems, uh, you can go through these three steps to see if you really construct a bijection or if you can really apply the multiplication principles. Okay, next, uh, let's look at uh, another example. So let integer n greater than or equal to zero. How many uh, subsets does S have? So S is a set, a set consists of natural numbers from 1 to n. So solution, let t be an arbitrary a subset of s, then for each element i of s, we have Two possibilities that either I is in T or I is not in T. Then for different integers, we might construct the following uh, diagram just like 
For one, we construct a set. So in this set, you have two elements, one in T, one is not in T. Remember, recall that for a set, you can put everything in it, just like Wisconsin, UW Madison, Hanlong, or your own name. And two, two in T, two not in T, N, N in T, N, not in T. And then we have, I claim there's a bijection between, okay. There is a bijection between the Cartesian product, one in T, one, one not in T, times two in T, two not in T, times all the way to N in T, N not in T, with uh, uh, the, all the subsets of S. Okay, then if you want to know how many subsets of S, there are, you only need to count the cardinality of the Cartesian product. Therefore, uh, the number of subsets of S equals the cardinality of the Cartesian product, so it's 2 to n's power. Remark, uh, if you don't buy it, just let's just uh, try some example. For 1, 2, 3, and uh, then uh, the subset you have is 0, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay, and then you can use the previous construction. Use the above. Okay, so write down. Sorry, construct the bijection for one, two, three for the subsets of one, two, three and uh, the Cartesian product uh, one in T blah blah okay so this is a remark one Remark two. Uh, later on, if you learn mathematical analysis, uh, usually, or you lo learn some logics, you will know for a set uh, P, we usually denote the uh, subset of P as 2 to the P. This is because the above statement about a uh, result. Okay, and uh, a very interesting uh, consequence is uh, let Z be Z plus. be all the positive uh, p 
positive integers, then uh, what do you have? Then you have you can construct the power series, just a subset of Z. The cardinality of this guy is strictly greater than the cardinality of Z plus. Of course, here cardinality is not a number, just its cardinality. So what does this mean? So if you have interest, in, you have interest, in, you can look at uh, Rudin's uh, textbook on mathematical analysis. Okay, uh, this is for today. And next time, uh, we will uh, introduce another two principles and uh, uh, start with the permutation. Okay, I will stop here.